So I'm Monica, and I um, am at my first TED, and I have the worst cold I've had in months. So, um, and I'm very, very high on cold medication. So I can't really be responsible for anything that comes out of my mouth in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, so Kelly and I want to talk to you a little bit about um, how people who have absolutely no experience with gaming end up doing some gaming. Um, and as Teresa mentioned, I am a sociologist, I'm not a gamer. So this is me on the left and my older sister, Tanya. Uh, with our Hasbro Lightbrite um, around 1970. I now understand that Lightbrite has an iPhone app. Um, does anybody have that? <laughs> uh, this is sort of my experience with games when I was a kid. This is my current experience with games. I have children who are nine and seven, and um, both girls, and they like to play Club Penguin. And uh, with Club Penguin, you actually have to uh, participate as a parent, um, give permissions, update accounts. Uh, it it kind of keeps you up to date on what they're doing um, with the game. So we spend a fair amount of time with penguins. And penguins actually feature into my talk in uh, a little bit as well. Um, this is what I do, uh, which is not gaming. I am a sociologist. I study women's health and reproductive politics. I interview people. I do ethnographies. Um, I travel to places uh, where people are doing the kinds of work that I'm interested in studying, uh, which include um, fetal surgery, which was the subject of my first book. Um, I study contraceptive technologies, a variety of environmental health politics that connect to reproductive bodies um, and injustice. And I'm currently working on infant mortality, which is the subject of the game that, that we're producing. So how many people saw March of the Penguins? Yay. OK. So March of the Penguins um, was the first sort of public discourse about infant mortality. Now, those of you who saw it probably didn't think of it as being about infant mortality. Um, but it is, of course, a film about how parents struggle to keep their children alive in very extreme hazardous conditions. Um, it's a story about um, mommy and papa uh, penguins who take their turns caring for the eggs that will become the baby penguins and, um, and hopefully produce penguins who will live and not die. Uh, I, I write about this in my book, Missing Bodies, as um, kind of the first uh, sort of touching story about infant death. Um, because when we talk about infant death, we don't um, typically talk about it in ways that um, address grief or address the pain of losing a child or the loss to a family and community uh, of infant death, we actually talk in the language of numbers. We talk about the infant mortality rate. We talk about the rate vis-a-vis -vis the health of a nation or the health of a county, which Kelly will talk a little bit about in a moment. So as the kind of sociologist who actually doesn't measure things, I'm probably the least mathematical sociologist you'll ever meet, um, I'm interested in stories. I'm interested in telling stories um, about the kinds of social losses that an infant death brings. Um, and gaming, to me, seemed like another way to tell the story. And these are the kinds of images that we want to evoke with the work that we're doing. Um, this is clearly not a table or a chart or a number. Um, we have real clear images here that, that evoke the kinds of grief that infant death brings to people's lives. So the impetus for the game came uh, to me when I attended the Women Deliver conference in 2010. Women Deliver um, is a, an NGO, an international NGO, that does work on maternal and child health. And anyone who follows the world of maternal and child health knows that um, the, that is the big issue um, in women's health right now. And then the MDGs, the United Nations MDGs, are targeted um, to improving maternal health rates. So I went to this conference, which had about um, 3,500 people from all over the world, heads of state, um, wives and husbands of heads of state, celebrities, uh, sociologists, um, NGOs of various kinds. Um, and the issue, whoops, I'm not moving here. Can you flip me forward, Kel? OK, so at the conference, there were um, a booth set up, as many conferences have, and there were people and posters and flyers, and I came back with bags and bags of things like jump drives and CDs and DVDs and pictures and all sorts of data. I mean, all of that to me is data, given the kind of work that I do. Um, but something was missing um, at that conference. And what I thought was missing was a real sense of play um, or a sense of fun and really a sense of gaming. Now, you might be thinking, wow, well, it's a maternal child health conference. Why should it be fun? 
And, and you might be right. I mean, these are very, very serious issues. Women and babies are dying all over the globe. We have very high rates in certain parts of the world. But there is something about that sense of engagement and fun that allows you an entree into an issue. Um, so I came back thinking, what would it be like to have a game about infant mortality? What would that look like? Kelly? So shortly thereafter, Teresa came to give a job talk, and I hired her, and Roger hired her. I saw Roger in the audience. Roger and I hired Teresa. Um, and when she came to give her talk, one of the things I loved was a presentation she did about domestic violence in a community in Chicago. And she had sort of uh, a kind of representational, spatial location of incidents of violence in this very sort of middle class suburb or neighborhood in Chicago, which is my hometown. Um, and it was really moving to me to see in that format um, a real social issue. And that got me sort of thinking about things. And then I hired Kelly, um, who you're going to hear from in a minute. Kelly is a, a student in the MA program in Social Justice and Human Rights. Um, she's taken a couple of my classes, very interested in these issues. And we started thinking about a game called Mortal Coil. And there have been some challenges with the game, uh, in which she will tell you more about in terms of um, figuring out how we want to turn a very vexing social issue about death into something fun into a game, into something that would engage people. And the problem is that you can't always win the game of infant mortality. Um, and this is something that the team is struggling with. And for example, if we use a location like um, Washington State, which has very good prenatal health care um, for women and indigent women, um, you could actually intervene in ways that improve the rates. But if we pick Somalia, and we're planning to produce a site of Somalia for the game, um, very rarely will a, a gamer win um, and be able to keep a baby alive in Somalia. So the object is not really about winning, per se. It's about trying to educate people about what factors need to come into play to um, keep babies alive, to help families thrive, um, to produce the kinds of conditions that allow um, an infant to survive a, a hardship. So now I'm going to turn it over to Kelly. Thank you, too. Okay. So this is where I come in. And like Monica, I kind of wanted to start with um, my experience in gaming. Um, I grew up playing Super Mario 64, and that was pretty much it. Um, and I still can't play it by myself. My younger brother has to sit next to me and tell me what buttons to push. So <laughs> that's, um, that's where I came into this as a gamer, um, was this very, very limited experience with Mario when I was little. So um, when Monica and Teresa presented this idea about creating a video game about Infant mortality, I was, I was interested because, um, I mean, I study communications and how do we communicate political experiences? And I thought gaming was kind of an interesting and new way to communicate that. But as someone with little to no gaming experience, I had no idea how to actually translate that. So um, the, these are infant mortality rates by states in the United States. And as a researcher, this means a lot to me. This means a ton. I can read a whole lot into this. So when we really started this process, I went to our game team and had tons of charts like this and went, OK, we'll make a game. Here's, here's the information. <laughs> and, and that didn't make sense to them. So um, I thought, really, what this is about, I realized, is learning to communicate. The game's about communicating, but learning how to take social justice issues and turn them into games so people realize the relationship between different aspects like race, class, income, education levels, to how do you communicate that to people through a game, but then first of all, just to create the game, how do I communicate that to our game team? And so that's really been the struggle that I've been going through this past semester, trying to figure out how do we talk to each other. So for me, for example, 
if, if I read a statement that says such and such percent of infant deaths are to African American teenage girls in Memphis, Tennessee, that, that says a lot to me. And when I say that to the game team, they say, okay, so how does that look in gameplay? And I say, I have no idea what you're talking about. So, <laughs> so that's where we started. Um, but we've slowly started figuring out how do they tell me what they need? What kind of information do they need? And I'm slowly figuring out, okay, well, here's the information I have. What, what does that look like as a game? And it's actually really taught me to reframe the research in a way that's very helpful for me, I think very constructive, because I've got to figure out the relationships and put them more in terms of points and strategy and how does that all work together. So um, <clears throat> this was my breakthrough moment a few weeks ago, actually. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I was working with a team and we just still failure to communicate. And uh, mostly on my part, I think they were starting to understand me a little bit better, but I was still not understanding how to put this research in terms of a game. And so what I did finally was they asked me for a matrix of resources and obstacles and how do these work together. And I sat down to make this matrix and I realized, well, not everything's an obstacle, not everything's a resource. Education is a resource for pregnant women, but it can also be an obstacle if you don't have it. So what I started to realize is there are just a ton of resources out there that pregnant women need to acquire. And that's really when I had this snap moment of, well, there's the strategy. That's the strategy. You've got to acquire these resources. But then the interrelationality, so I started sitting down and making charts and put it in terms of units, and what would the point system look like? Um, and so this is mostly for my mind, um, to try and figure out how does this look like as a game? What does being a pregnant woman look like if it's a game? So as you can see, I've got two examples up here, and you can see kind of how everything relates. So if you attend community college, you mostly have to have income, but once you start getting into higher degrees, you have to have income and education and a background. And for medical care, for example, to use a prenatal vitamin example, if you get prenatal vitamins, you get two units of health, which is what we ultimately want, right? We want healthy babies, so we want as many health units as we can get. Then you have to have one unit of awareness. You have to know to go get prenatal vitamins. And then you have to have one unit of income. You have to pay for those prenatal vitamins. You have to pay for doctor visits. Um, so that's where I started. It clicked, it became strategy, and I went to our team the next day after I had made this and went, look what I did, look what I did. I was so excited and proud of myself. And, um, and it, I think I saw a moment in all of their faces where they went, yes, now this all makes sense. I think they could internalize now that I'd put it in a system of points and how do these things relate. We just had this great moment where I think just, just all kind of came together. So it's been exciting to get the different iterations of the game and to play it and see what everybody comes up with. So I'm really interested to see where, um, where gaming can go to educate people about social justice, um, just to teach people about the relationships and what really impacts different health outcomes or jobbing outcomes or whatever social justice issue we're going to talk about. I just think, um, I, I really thank the game team for teaching me how, how we can really teach people about social justice through gaming. So I'm really excited to see what we come up with in the end. That's all I have.